Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be watching The Lord of the Frenzied Flame by Vyati Vidya. I am very excited. I don't know a lot about The Frenzied Flame. I never did that ending. Um, but a couple of people that I watched, like Emolition, did that ending. Uh, but I'm very interested. I know that The Frenzied Flame is linked to The Merchants, I think. And that's all I really know. So, as always... Fayati's channel and this original video will be found in the description down below. Please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you. And if not, hit that like button. It really helps the video out and really helps the channel out. And let's go. I've just noticed that the chapters are called Prepare to Cry and Cry a Lot. <laughs> if anybody's watched my born prepared to cry um i did actually nearly cry so let's hope it's not emotional the lands between are ruined mired in torment and despair is there really anything here worth fighting for is there any one worth saving hello is somebody there my name is arena i've escaped from castle morn to the south I know this is going to be a really serious video, but before we go any further, my cousins live in Gloucester and they really sound like Irina. So when I first heard her dialogue, I was really taken aback because they sound like my cousins. Oh, it's just so weird. My good father secreted me out the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says it's his duty. As commander, the servants there have rebelled. Filled with hatred for every one of us. They've since come for every one of the companions I escaped with. They haven't spared a soul. I... I fear for father's life. And my soul wishes that he escape. The slaves of Castle Morn are misbegotten. Their very existence is considered to be a punishment. But their only crime was being born outside of grace. I didn't know that. So they're obviously they're born outside of grace, but I didn't realize that they were like a punishment. So it's no wonder that hatred has fermented in their hearts, inspiring them to finally break free of their masters. The next step in a cycle of revenge that began at Castle Morn long ago. Ah. I see from Arena. Thank you. I mean, you're dead, but I can't leave yet. Even if the castle should fall, as commander, I must remain to ensure the treasured Sword of Morn does not fall into the wrong hands. Look at that Game of Thrones sword. I can't remember what that sword's called. I'm sure Vyati will tell us in a minute, but the misbegotten is like easy but hard if you get me like his life bar his life is like really short like you hit him and his life bar drains quite quick but if you're quite new to the games i feel like he can absolutely pummel you so i feel like he's like an easy but hard boss ages ago he looks a lone scary champion fought at castle morn his entire clan had been vanquished but he grafted their swords onto his own and continued to fight so determined was he to claim his revenge and so, this became the legendary sword of Castle Morn. It was claimed by the banished knights of Godric, stolen by a misbegotten, and then passed down to you. And with it, the cycle of revenge continues. An eye for an eye. Ooh. I'm in your debt for keeping the sword from those fallen creatures. I'm no longer bound by duty. Once I've rescued Arena, I will spend my remaining days with her. No matter what you do, she dies, right? Because she's died. I've played Elden Ring twice fully and finished it and then played it about to like halfway through. And every single one of my playthroughs, I've done something different to get to Castle Morn and she's died every single time. So is she just like inevitably gonna die? Her 
Sabrina. How could this be? My daughter deserved better. The fault lies with me. I chose duty over my daughter's safety. And that is how fate has answered. I'll find them. The foul wretch is responsible for this. I'll hunt them down and exterminate every last one of them. Rest assured, Arena, it will be done. You're a tarnished. Hey, it's I my boy. It. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. I love Carly. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. Kale and the Church of Ella, or the Church of Ela, however you say it, are like my safe place in Elden Ring. Whenever I um, am finishing, like, playing or if I was filming an episode for YouTube, I always go back there. That is, like, my safe space and I would always just rest at the site of Grace and, like, quit out the game there. He's, like, one of my favourite characters and I like that his dialogue change. He introduces you to Blythe and then he'll be like, wait, weren't you? And you're like, weren't I what? Like... I feel like he was like hinting to something. This video might explain that a bit more, but he's just, he doesn't like threaten you. He doesn't, you know, like NPCs always die in these games. Like he's not dead. He doesn't threaten you. He's not sassy. He's just lovely. And he's just sat there playing his little thing with his little donkey and he's just pure. There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. If the mood takes you and you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle, but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now. I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the Tarnished. And mine. See that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers. Lament not your solitude. Expect no sympathy, no regard, nothing. But if anyone dares harm us, show them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are, deeply uh -huh. unforgiving. They can do the frenzied flame magic. I didn't know that. They have like the madness. I did not know that. There you go. So obviously the merchants are really linked to the frenzied flame. I know that they're underground when you find the hand that like gives you the frenzied flame. And um, because I saw that in Emolition's playthrough, but I had no idea. There we go. We've I've learned something else new. Within the eyes of the oldest merchants, a secret is hidden deeply unforgiving indeed but i've done all i can here i'm thinking of moving elsewhere for a time so far we've spoken of misbegotten banished knights tarnished and merchants all were spurned by grace in one way or another you can't go too far without wondering if the golden order is to blame for the oceans of anger and despair when we last met Edgar, he swore revenge upon the misbegotten. But now, all must die, misbegotten or not. Oh. And if you defeat Edgar, you will receive a Shabriri grape. It's our proof that his need for revenge no longer divides or distinguishes. Love, revenge, melt it all away in the yellow chaos flame. I've never fought Edgar before. I fought um, in that, I think it's in that shack that they've just shown you at night. 
oh, what are they called? You know, it's not the beast clergyman. That's what's his face. Those shacks at night have guys and their sword does like magic. You'll know what I mean, but um, I, I don't think I've ever fought Edgar before. Oh my god, the edit on that was so good. But there are those who fight against the tarnished who stalk their own. Hey, it's Yura! Yura the hunter of bloody fingers will often be at your side. Yura, his story is like really sad like when you first meet him he's like don't go into the lake the dragon will kill you blah 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 and he seems like really nice and then he helps you come and fight down near that area again and then you fight is it eleonora and then he dies and then later on you see him in the mountain tops of the giants and it's not him anymore so i killed him in my playthrough because i was like i feel like i've bonded to yura and he's like oh i hope you don't mind i'm just like wearing his face and it's like actually yes i do mind yura comes from the land of reeds a place that has long been locked in a miserable civil war and it's said that the entire nation has succumbed to a blood-soaked madness. It's not too surprising, then, that Yura fights against any blood-crazed tarnished, whether they serve the Lord of Blood or otherwise. But Yura's true mark is a drake knight named Eleonora, located at the Second Church of America, oh. where she kills Yura no. in cold blood. Once, Eleonora had a legacy as a proud knight, but because of her dragon communion, it seems her humanity has slipped away. So you put that legacy to rest. I used her sword in my playthrough and I got all the way to the end until I realized that you can't do like a single swing with it. You have to, do, it does a swing, 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 swing. And then if you use the R2, it does the pole blade move. But I didn't realize that you couldn't just do like one, two. It has to do like one, two, three, four when you use it. So I played my whole playthrough with that sword and kept getting hit. And then it wasn't until the very end when I switched sword, I was like, oh, that's why. Because you're stuck in the animation of using the sword. By now, it should be it's clear cool, though. that madness takes many forms. Hello? Is someone there? My name is Hayata, and I'm journeying in search of the distant light. If I might be so bold as to ask... Would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? She looks like Arena, but Arena is dead. Somehow, this Hayata has taken over that body. But for what purpose? Oh, I didn't realise that. I just thought they looked the same because they were from like the same kin. I didn't realise that this was another Yura situation. Interesting. She barely even knows herself. I can feel a distant light in the back of my eyes. It will lead me to my true duty as a finger maiden. You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? They rest their trembling hands upon me. Howling yeah. wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. Their frail fingers, emaciated. Yet still, they give me the grapes. But you seem somehow firmer now i can feel the distant light once more that aside i wonder what shabriri grapes really are i like to be tender and sweet yet searing what a sight they must be to behold of course the shabriri grapes are eyes yellow shriveled and oozing that's not possible not all of those people their own so those noises i heard were <laughs> Same. <laughs> I actually don't like grapes at the best of times. Anything that like you bite into and it does that like in your mouth, I like hate that. So like, I don't like grapes at the best of times. So when they're like shabriri grapes, like that gives me the ick anyway. <laughs> but I knew they were eyeballs. I just love that she's just gone like. <laughs>
Shabriri, the most reviled man in all of history. It all began long ago with the crime of slander. Shabriri came up with a lie, and it was so damaging, so heinous, that his eyes were gouged out as a punishment when that lie was proven to be false. We can't be sure of what was said, but what if Shabriri slandered the nomadic merchants? Oh. What if, with a crooked smile, he accused them of the very crime he himself was guilty of, saying that they had fraternized with the three fingers and were not to be trusted? This would explain why the nomadic merchants came to be so hated. He looks like a vampire from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, doesn't he? Interesting that he fraternised with the two fingers and then blamed it on the merchants. Classic. It is said, after all, that the sickness of the Flame of Frenzy began with Shabriri. And after his eyes were gouged out, the blight of the Flame of Frenzy came to dwell in his empty sockets. Yellow eyes became known as Shabriri grapes, and frenzy started to infect the despairing world. The madness belongs to those who have lost everything. Ah, by the way, well, even we had a place to call home once. The Great Caravan, they called it. But it's been lost to us for ages. I've been searching for it as long as I can remember. And with a name like that, you'd hope they kept some fine goods there, eh? I've always preferred my own company to that of other people's. And Same. I don't have any burning questions I wish to ask my ancestors. But there's something I need to know. My roots. I want to know who I am. Where I came from. Where I'm headed. I hope you can join me at the Great Caravan, in fact. That's so wholesome. I hate that they're hated for something that they didn't do. And it makes me sad that they're like wanderers. Like when you saw him wandering then, he just looks so frail. Like walking past the knights and the big like tree avatar. Like it makes you wonder how they've survived so long. Obviously they have the madness, but like, you know, would that keep them alive? I don't know. I think that's really sad. Who knows what wonders there might be to trade. If Shabriri did indeed slander the merchants, then he knew exactly what their despair might bring. Oh no. This is why it's called Prepared to Cry. Ah. Uh, is that you over there? I've gleaned something very important indeed, thanks to you. The reason why it was eyes I had to eat. The distant light is far and frail. So faint it can't be seen by the naked eye. But with everyone's eyes together, it appears. Finally, it all makes sense. I'm certain now. I will be a finger maiden. Could you donate a fingerprint grape to me? They're special grapes which only grow on those who've been clasped by the burnt fingers. We only oh. know of one other who was clasped in such a manner. His name was Vike. The dragon spear. After the war with the Vike, why is Vike familiar? Is Vike a Vike is a target from the manor? What's it called? With Rikard. Um Vike is a assassin on one of the letters, isn't he? And you have to kill him. Or is Vike one of the ones that you kill by the giant pot? No, I think he's an assassin, but or you you sent you're sent to assassinate him. Ancient dragons. There came the rise of the dragon cultists, who earned the dragon's affection. One of the most beloved was Vike the Dragon Spear, a tarnished descended from Godfrey, who eventually returned from across the sea to join the Round Table Hold in hopes of becoming Elden Lord. 
To this end, Vike was assigned a finger maiden and acquired the power of two great runes. But when he stood before the thorns of the Erd Tree, he realized the truth, that a maiden's true purpose is to burn the thorns for the one who would become Elden Lord. And whether it was born of love or duty, Vike refused to burn his maiden, for the whisperings of Shabriri had told him of another flame. A flame of frenzy hidden deep below the capital that could burn the thorns away. But when Vike returned, his maiden was dead. No. Did she commit suicide after betraying her purpose? Or was Vike captured and punished for his treason? Oh, wait, Vike, you fight Vike in the Everjail, don't you? I remember now because I fought him not that long ago. That's why it's familiar. I can't remember where he is, though. Is he in the mountain tops of the giants? Whatever the case, now Vike's vengeful spirit defends the dead maiden at the Church of Inhibition, while the real Vike kneels imprisoned in an ever jail deep within the Forbidden Lands. There we go. Clad in armor, clasped by three burnt fingers. This is all that remains of the contender that was supposed to become Elden Lord. I like his character design, like his caved-in helmet. He looks like... Um, oh, what is his name? Demon Souls. It's not Oscar. It's not Artorius. That's the boss in Dark Souls 1. What is his name? And he looks like he's smelly because he's got all the thing coming off him. A, a Strava. He looks like a Strava, doesn't he? With like his uh, helmet. But obviously, Astravas is not caved in. for him. Wow, that was so epic. That was amazing. I loved that. The music slapped as well. Finally, we meet the tarnished who would be Lord. Oh my, why the long face? I fear that you were previously acquainted with this vessel. Yeah, well, imposter. That is most unfortunate, for he is dead. As for his flesh, he gave it to me. Shabriri. I hope 
You can make your peace with that. No. You're about to sacrifice something precious. The life of a fair maiden that you would toss into the fiery forge only so that you may be lord. What a horrible thing to ponder. Your ascendancy requires her sacrifice, whether she wishes it or not. But how would the lord crowned so be looked upon? Chosen tarnished and would be lord dare to tread the path of true rigor. Spare the poor girl and singe your own flesh in her stead. If you are prepared to show resolve and attain lordship through righteous hardship, then heed the words of I, Shabriri. Chosen, tarnished, and would-be lord, descend into the depths far below the Erd Tree capital. Seek audience with the three fingers and the flame of frenzy. If you inherit the flame of frenzy, your flesh will serve as kindling. Burn the Erd Tree to the ground and incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. Ah, oh, may chaos take the world. May chaos take the world. That's Shibori exactly what I did. Is chaos incarnate? I cannot die. If you intend to claim the frenzied flame, I ask that you cease. It is not to be meddled with. Oh. It is chaos, devouring life and thought unending. However ruined this world has become, however mired in torment and despair, life endures. Births continue. There is beauty in that, is there not? If you would become Lord, do not deny this notion. Please, leave the Frenzied Flame alone. So if you go to the Frenzied Flame and you complete that, does Melina, like, leave? Will she leave you? Because obviously you're not... She'll, she, will she say you're not on the same path as her? Because she wants to sacrifice herself to set the Erd Tree ablaze. So I'm guessing she'll be like, well, see you later then. But I don't know. Maybe they'll tell you that in a second, but... And maybe you would have left it alone. Were it not for the horrors that you found down there. Did you see? What they did to my ancestors. The whole clan buried alive. Sick. Maddened. Husks of themselves. If you heard their moans, they're hardly human anymore. They think we worship the three fingers that we called the maddening sickness down upon them. Well, if that's what they expect from us, then that's what they shall get from us! The world of Grace and his people should have been content to see us sink between the cracks, but to have intruded upon our solace, having broken us upon their whims, Give any of you. Oh my god, no, 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 no. We're now in the cry a lot bit, and I can feel it, man. 
that is horrific. Poor Carly. Like, that is so sad. We won't be training any longer. God, listen Wait. to them. What's that? A burn. Your eyes. You've inherited the flame of frenzy. Unknown warrior. Divest yourself of everything. This is tipping me over the edge. Our oh, three fingers. So wide is the door. I was trying not to cry and I was holding it in because I felt so bad for Carlo but it's made me yawn so now my eyes are watering anyway because I was like holding my breath <laughs> the yellow flame of chaos Frenzied flame to melt away the curses, suffering, and despair. And the order entire. Melt away the curses, suffering, despair. And the order entire. May chaos take the world. May chaos take the world. Oh, it burns. My eyes. My eyes, they're melting. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it was a parcel for a couple doors down. The dog's going to be all wired up now, though. I have touched them. The words of the three fingers. As your maiden, allow me to divine them. All that there is came from the one great. Then came fractures, and births, and souls. But the greater will made a mistake. Torment, despair, affliction, every sin, every curse, every one born of the mistake. And so, what was borrowed must be returned. Melt it all away with the yellow chaos flame until all is one again. Those who gave me grapes howled without words, saying they wished they were never born. They come, their lord, take their torment, despair, their affliction, every sin, every curse, Jesus. and melt it all away. As the Lord of Chaos, no more fractures, no more birth. So the frenzied flame is like the end of everything. I feel so bad for Carly. I feel like I'm going to be thinking about that all night. Like I knew the merchants were down there because I've been down there myself in my first playthrough. So my first playthrough, 
I did like um, like every quest line that I could and I did like really take my time with the game but I still did the Age of Stars ending but I did go down into the Shunning Grounds and go all the way around there. I actually didn't realise that the Frenzied Flame hand was like, like I knew it was like behind the wall but obviously like I didn't do like the quest or anything but I didn't realise that they were all of like the merchants. I didn't realise that until now watching this. I thought they were just like bodies. I guess I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have been because they had all of their instruments. I just didn't put two and two together. Um, I just think that's mad. I feel like the mad... I don't know if... Is it a good ending to get the Frenzied Flame? And so it is that an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. See, I don't like the sound of that. You have inherited the frenzied flame. A pity. Our accord ends here. Oh yeah, she says see you later. Ending seems bleak. Reminds me of like Mordor, man. It's all like brimstone and fire, and it seems really miserable. That's a cool shot, though. Of frenzied flame. I will seek you as far as you may travel. To deliver you what is yours. Destined death. Thank you for watching. If you want to get early access to whoa, 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 more whoa. videos like this, then you can consider signing up to my Patreon. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that the ending that you get where Melina turns up? Obviously, she didn't die, but like... Her, her other eye opened. I've never seen that before. And like, she's going to hunt you down and give you destined death. Oh my god, that is crazy. That has like opened me up to so much more like lore that I had no idea about. This one to me has been the most interesting one to watch because this is the thing that I know the least about. I know a lot about Rani Blythe and all of that because I've done the Age of... Is it the Age of Stars ending? I've done that both times I've played. And I was going to do the Frenzied Flame ending this time, but that's not the ending that I wanted on my YouTube channel. I wanted... The Age of Stars, where you become Rani's consort, uh, Eternal, like, on my channel. Oh my god, I can't believe that. That is That has blown my mind. Wow, okay, I really need to go away and digest that. I feel like the edit on that one was absolutely superb as well. And as always, like, Viati's just way of storytelling is just unmatched. I just love that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. Viati's information is all in the description down below. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.